All right, I am back. I went upstairs and I uploaded some of that video or all of that video that I had so far. And I'm sorry some of the stuff is out of the shot. I am not used to working with the camera this way and I don't know what happened, but I think you get the, the gist of it. I wasn't going to reshoot it because I figured you really understood what I was, I could understand what I was saying um, by what I saw. I mean, you couldn't see total or oh, whatever. It's going to be what it is. All right. So meantime, I've gone and I have put some uh, pattern paper on most of my book. I did ink the edges. Um, I used vintage photo. I wasn't gonna because I was being very lazy, but I did. Um, you know what? I did not. Let me think. Oh, I did. I attached all three of them. I got carried away. I didn't mean to. Wait. Did I? No, I didn't. Okay, good. We still have one of the things. Oh, good, good. All right. All right, because what I want to do now is just go over um, matting your uh, book. So what I want to do is just talk about what I like to do generally, and I'm using scraps. Basically, I'm down to like four pieces of 12 by 12 paper left, and the rest is at least hopefully six inches wide. So what I, I definitely, I matted these um, with a quarter inch and I only usually leave an eighth of an inch so the rest of the book is an eighth of an inch the mat you can see like see how there's only an eighth of an inch there but there's a quarter of an inch there see what I'm saying so I was just working with scraps and what I had so don't um, go by me in that uh, case okay you can mat yours however you would normally mat yours and by mat I mean put this decorative paper onto your card and onto your book. That's called matting, evidently. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've cut. This is this is the first time I ever did this, but I wanted to do this to make it quick, right? I, I measured each page first, how I wanted to mat, and I just wrote it down on the surface because you're covering it anyway. So then when I came to the page, because I do like to coordinate, like kind of coordinate the paper, like this is kind of brown and green and a little bit of blue. So I did the mats on the um, tags in blue and then did this one green. So um, it was the first time I ever did that. But every, literally every place I needed a mat, I wrote the measurement on the page like this. Can you see that? So I would suggest that. That's like a really great thing to do. Um, the only thing I have a definite true measurement for is the mats um, for the tags. So and it says small mat and large mat, but those were, um, I, I had, I just had to use bigger paper for that. But for the cards, I went with my six inch scraps. So that's why this is not, um, Okay, a it's not an eighth of an inch, it's a quarter. So I hope you guys understand what I'm saying. All right, now that I've pulled everything out, I just want to go back and show you what I've done. All right, so, so that's what I would do. Now, for what I do, I take my Tim Holtz ruler, and if you want to mat this surface, let's see, I'm going to pull my pa papers out because I have everything, I had everything ready to go. Of course, oh, here it is, under here, okay. So for these two spaces, you have this and then the pocket. You do not need to put a whole sheet of paper. You only need enough to cover the pocket. So I just literally make it like maybe a quarter of an inch to half an inch bigger, slide it in and mat it like that. And then this one, um, so you just take off a quarter inch. So look, if this measures five inches, you're gonna cut your mat to four and three quarters. Let me see, did I do that? a little short let's say five inches I think I did these what did I what did I write four and five eighths I did it I ended up doing it because look actually the measurement you know what I was very exact this measures it doesn't measure five inches it measures four and seven eighths so I took a quarter inch off that and that would be four and five eighths. All right. 
so I hope I'm not confusing anybody but basically you take a quarter inch off and that'll give you an eighth inch around the edge all right so let's mat this I already inked my edges and I'm using my ATG to do all my matting I told you now if you um, want to continue to use wet glue that works any any way you want to do it because I mean this paper might come off I'm not guaranteeing it it'll stay on um, the way I would with wet glue and then you just line it up I'm making sure I'm in the shot kind of like even with a quarter inch space I eyeball everything and just get it down and with this one I just I put uh, adhesive all the way around the edge first and then just maybe a little X in the middle or something that's all you need to do and with this one I stick it under and just get one side of it lined up and then stick it down and there you go so that's matted now now for this side I want to show you this I'm going to use this piece of paper I've already inked the edges and this is seven by four and seven eighths but remember this is the back of the envelope where the flap used to cover that spot so when you're doing this I am going to use a little piece a little um, wet glue on this because this is weird like this dried hard because it's uh, got the wet glue under it it's like weird it's bent um, it'll straighten itself out so because this isn't directional now if you had a piece of paper that had to be top and bottom you want to remember where you're at make sure this this doesn't matter I could do it either way but usually I, I take this away and I would do this edge first because I'm going to use my dry adhesive for that edge and the two sides and then I go down the middle with dry adhesive and kind of fill in that area. Can you see that? So that side. And then I'm just going to take and run a line of wet glue along this edge. And I don't know why I do this. I just want to make sure it doesn't, the pocket area or this area here adheres. I don't know. It's just how I've done it for forever. And this is kind of a wonky page so I'm just going to line this up as best I can with a quarter in, or I'm sorry an eighth of an inch matting area and lay it down and push that and get my little uh it's bendy it's like really bendy it's warpy I don't know why I tried warpy see how it's warpy it'll be fine I'll put paper on the front of it and then the only other thing that there could be an issue with is when you put your, um, what is it called, the, the card in that pocket, it won't go down all the way because, um, where am I, where's my page? This, you have to make sure it's like open enough down there. So I'm just going to stick my ruler and show you what I, see this I can already see, it's not adhered because that's weird so I'm gonna burnish burnish a little more use my paper towel and burnish you know you could use um, this thing whatever this is called too but it's a lot rougher I'm very rough that's why I use um, paper towel a lot because I can just rub it hopefully I'm in the shot yeah I'm sorry that I wasn't in the shot I'm not used to shooting um, with the with this to the side of me so that is done. That's all matted. Let me see how this pocket is working out. Yeah, see it didn't adhere down there at all. I don't know why. I think, of course, because I'm on camera. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to squirt a little bit under here and hope for the best. And you know what? It's not the worst thing in the world if it doesn't all adhere because... The pocket isn't, it's not like it's going to have something falling out of it. It's just to hold a, um, the, um, the note card. So it's, the note card kind of stops itself because it has a hinge. So it's not the worst thing in the world, but you do want to make sure this gets adhered. You know what? It probably would be better to use just the thin, um, line tape or whatever. This, what is the freaking, I can't remember what it's called. I can't I can't anyway um I don't know why I just used wet glue and I did it on the whole book so let's see here's another pocket let's see how that one adhered oh, that's not one of those kind there's like I think there's like three of those kind I think this is one yeah this is one 
So I'm going to stick it in there. So that's totally adhered. That's adhered. Um, so yeah, so just listen. I'm rushing through this, and I just want to make sure I get tell you the information. Take your time and do it the way you would normally do your crafts, um, with the attention that you would normally pay to your crafts, and do a good job. This actually, I'm not disappointed. I think this is, it turned out sweet. It's very cute. I think anybody would be happy to receive it. I'm going to add um, this stamp set, our stamp set, this paper collection has some of these cut aparts in here. So I'll add some of these to some of the pages that like just seem plain, you know, like maybe stick something up here in the corner for her to write dates on or little notes about the picture. But mostly I just want her to put pictures on here. This a picture, a photo will go there and then just I'll put like love bug or something above it, you know. Um, and then this is this is a cute mat doesn't really need anything. Um, but that is mainly what I'll do. I mean, you can put paper clips in here and clip things. I mean, um, all right, so let me finish what I was doing. So I'm going to mat now um, the two pockets. Uh, I got ahead of myself and I already matted one side of them, but I'm going to mat the other side so you can see. And these are a specific measurement. They are four and a quarter by seven and a quarter for the big one and four and a quarter by five and a quarter for the little one. And that's leaving an eighth of an inch room. And that's normally what I leave. So I like just an eighth of an inch around the edge um, for a border when I mat things normally. But because I was using scraps, I just, I went a little bigger on the note cards. So just make sure you get, oops, about an eighth of an inch. I'm eyeballing, see? And then make, so yeah, that's pretty centered. Get it on there. So see how there's just that eighth of an inch on the edge? See it better with the blue, I guess. All right, and do the same thing on your little one. And then I'll put those in and let you see how, I mean, I, I, I don't really think you need to see this, I guess. Um, put this. I like this paisley paper. I had, a, it, it's a scrap and I didn't have a lot of it. I didn't use a lot at all. See, I went, I didn't go far enough to that side, so this side is a little small, but that's okay. I'm good with it. I will put the brown side in there, and I will put the brown side up here. You know what the other thing is? Uh, I've done a lot of times in my, um, in these books, is I use a circle punch, and I'm going to grab it real quick. It's right here. This circle punch, I don't know what size it is. It doesn't say. It's about... It's like an inch. It's about an inch. I would take this. I think I might do it. I'm not sure. It kind of looks fine without it, but you can you can still do this, and I would suggest you do it after um, matting everything because you don't want to have to punch, 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 punch. Okay. So basically, you would just slip this little part under here and go to like halfway down the circle and punch so the and, and you would just have it on this side because you don't really need it on this side you would pull the tag out from this side i'm not sure if i'm going to do that but that is something that i have done a lot on my um mini albums so now the next thing we want to do is now that everything is matted i'm going to take these out just for a sec um we're going to adhere this little piece of card to the bottom now i didn't ink any of these I just didn't feel like, I thought I'm just going to have to ink the whole doggone book if I, if I start inking everything. So I'm going to show you how I, I use the wet glue again because this is part of the construction. I go halfway up one side and then down to halfway up the other and kind of fill this area in. And that way, if you wanted to stick a little note or something under there, there's a little edge that you could do that with. I probably, I don't know, it's not, might not be that big, but that's why she makes hers a little wider. Like, if you had another half inch on here, it would definitely hold, um, a little, uh, journaling card or something. And just kind of put that, um, evenly on the page and squeeze. Get that on the bottom, squeeze out your extra, see what's going on on this side. 
And that's it. That seals off the bottom of that um, pocket that we made originally. So I'm going to slide these back in now. So you have my battery's going to die, and I'm charging one upstairs now. But this feels good, actually. You know what you can always do? Oops, I'm bending that. Check your pockets like this. I just use my ruler, and I gently push down, kind of push. And I can feel the bottom of the ruler on the bottom of this pocket, and I'm just kind of wiggle and make it have a little more room. And that's just a good way to nudge your paper to get... That's nice, okay? So let's see. I think I'm all matted. I got, I have, I finished this one already. I already did this one. I did, you know, it depends how you put these in. You could put it in on that side. You could put it on this side. Um, so you have a note card in every, they're double matted. I didn't double mat all these yet, but I just matted one side so you could see. I'll finish it. All right, so the next thing we're going to do, I think I'm going to have to charge more batteries. Um, but see, look, this is already getting fatter. So it's a good thing we have this gusset. See, I'm out of the shot. Because it's already getting fatter with adding all the matting and the double, you know, all the double-sided paper and stuff. It starts to get fat. So you want your cover to be able to, and plus that wonky page now I have, which is weird. Um, but I'm going to come back. And you know what? What else do I have here? I think I'm still missing one of these. Yes, I am, because this goes here. So I'll mat this and put this here. And make sure I have everything. And then I still have one more. Yeah, this one is going to go... So I have one, two... This one goes here. I did this. I just did these because you, you don't really need to watch me do everything. So that's done. See, I didn't want to cover up the turtle. I'm going to put it the other way and cover this up. I like leaving the, um, the turtle open. I like this page. I'll put something up here. All right. So I still have to mat this, and then that'll be done. But see, once you put all that in, this is all real estate. That's what Kathy Orta called this, real estate, to put pictures on. So both of these, all this can have pictures or whatever you want to put. So there's quite a lot going on on here. So I'm going to come back in a little bit. Um, you know what? We can do the Tyvek. I'm ready to do the Tyvek. I could do that. So you want to take your Tyvek and apply your... I'm sorry. I just, I'm just i drawing a blank with what that's called. Put it on there, and I should have probably moved this one over so I could at least put a thin one down there. But it's fine. And then you want to burnish this down really well. Like really get it on there. Push down. Make sure it's stuck. All right, so I did that. And then you're going to take and put this on the side at your binding and just gently let it come over. All right, I'm going to go away and come back. My battery's going to die. Okay, so I got a new battery. Got all this done now. I have my mats all done, and I have this um, bottom part put on to all my pages and pretty much I just got to do my cover and the back these two covered this two and this two have to be with the decorative paper and that's it and then just um, decorating all right so the first thing we want to do is put, add our Tyvek to this um, binding and all that does is just kind of gives this a little extra reinforcement so that this all doesn't come apart okay so we're going to take this is the front of the book and I'm just going to peel off my um, tape covers and just line this up on this um, hinge here try to you can always trim this if you're a little uneven it's okay this is not um, going to show in any way, so I just want to get it on there. And the way she has you do it is you kind of hold it like this and just kind of push it so that it's like a not tight, tight, tight. And then you do the same thing on this side with the other piece. 
and just let them overlap. That's how I understood her to do it. So that's how I do it. She also has you ink the edges of the Tyvek, which I am going to skip. Um, the ink also makes the tape not stick. Like if I ink over this, then I try to glue something onto it. It's not going to stick. So I'm not doing that for tutorial purposes and just in general, I'm lazy. So please watch the Kathy order tutorial as well. So I'm just lining that up. Oops. Am I? Ooh, I gotta look what I'm doing. Sorry. Pay attention to so I'm not messing it up. All right. So I got that on there and then oopsie. See that? This will stick right away, guys. So if you get it over that lap, oh dear. I don't know if I did that very well. Yeah, it seems fine. All right, so you kind of have like a double layer of Tyvek. You have um, in the middle, especially, it's like a double layer. And then you take your scissors and just cut if there's any hanging over here, which I just have these little areas. Trim that off. I like to trim it after. I think she has you trim it. Um, I don't know when she has you trim it, but I do it after in case I like overlap and get it everywhere and stuff. So, all right. So now you have your, your, your book is secure. It's all secure and done. We are going to now add our front and back covers. And I think I'm going to do the next part, which would be um, the duct tape in the next segment. Um, because I need to gather, I need to, I want to, actually, I think I have the ribbon right here. Um, I think I do. But if not, I'm going to wait till tomorrow because it's getting late and I don't want to um, push it. So my binding, it feels a little tight, but I think we're good. I think we're going to be okay. All right, so we're going to go over here now and get my covers. And because it's not the same color paper. I'm just going to do this more florally one, I think, and then the br other brown on the back. And I'm just going to line them up. I'm going to move this up so you can see more. I don't know how to make you be able to see this. So see, that's my book. If I butt this up against the binding, you can't, it, those, um, the mats that I made with the note cards are at the at the edge of the of the um, cover and just the tops of the tags are showing a little bit and then you're pretty much even the pages are kind of even on the bottom all right so that's like a really good fit so when I adhere this I want to make sure that I put that right to the edge seems a little warpy everything's warping on me and that may be um, a part of the wet glue too because the wetness absorbs into the paper you know what I mean so it may change the shape of things so hey I'm not an expert this is just how I've done it and my experience so um, you know if you maybe you know better so I am going to attempt to line this up on that score line that I did originally on this hinge. So this line here that goes across, it's it's a little bit, I'm gonna, I'm trying to get the bend, the fold back to it because the tie back kind of took it away. And then make sure I like, okay, so if there's any part of the paper that you don't like, put that on the um, binding side and leave the nice side for the the side of the book that's going to be opening and stuff. So I think I want to put this side on my binding. And I'm just one, I think I want to use uh, the line tape for this. I really do because this is where the duct tape really comes in handy because, um, let me see where we're at, six minutes. Because um, it, it, it holds it from the other side this will hold it from the bottom, and then we're also going to use the other, the um, decorative tape. Oops, see, that's too wide. I got to go with a smaller piece. And this is not the same brand. It's the American Crafts or something. It's not as strong. 
I don't think. I don't think it's as good, nearly as good, as the original one. And I'm glad my, that's from my local craft store, which I only go every now and then. But I'm glad she switched back because it was crap. It wasn't good. I think she tried to switch to a different brand, but she ended up going back to it. And I really burnished this down really well to that Tyvek because the Tyvek has like this shiny surface a little bit. It doesn't really adhere very well to, to glue and stuff. All right. All right, guys. So this is it. All the pressure right here. I'm getting our book. Let me make sure I have the right side again. I want to put this. I'll probably ink the edges of this because when you go over, when you, um, so yeah, I'll ink the edges of this just to kind of hide any cracks or, you know, blemishes. But this is the, I'm going to put this part on here. So I'm going to go ahead and do it because we're running out of time. It's seven. I'm going to just use this tape right now. Then we're going to do duct tape to the other side of it. So. I have no thumbnails. Okay. So I'm going to do my best to eyeball this and get it on here along that edge and keep it straight as well. I'm going to do it this way, I think. I know you can't see what I'm doing, but you understand what I'm doing. Don't you? Don't you? I know you do. All right. So I'm just eyeballing and hoping for the best. Always hope for the best. All right, I think I'm good. I think I'm good, guys. I think I killed it. Push that down, burnish it down. And that's basically it. That's how you add. I mean, I think you can see that it's pretty butt up against there. This is pretty straight. It looks pretty straight. Let's go ahead and do the back one. I'm at 844. Should have, if I would have added this sooner, I could have probably beat the time. But you know, the second half wasn't planned at all. I hadn't planned any of this. This is off the cuff. So we're at nine minutes. I'm going to come back.